It's Friday, June 23rd. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Topping your headlines, a developing story. We're learning more about a serious two-car crash in Massapequa. It closed Merrick Road in both directions between Arlen Road West and Joe Ludo Drive from around 8.30 last night until this morning. Police say a 74-year-old man is in critical condition after his car collided with an SUV. The driver of the SUV suffered minor injuries. The Massapequa School Board has agreed to comply with the state's ban on team names, mascots, and logos with Native American imagery. The board plans to hold a community forum to consider establishing a new district-wide mascot. But last night, the board did move to challenge the order in court. The Board of Education's compliance shall in no way serve as a waiver or be construed as a waiver of the district's right to, among other things, challenge whether the use of the chief name does in fact constitute a prohibited indigenous name, logo, or mascot. The state ordered districts to commit to retire their mascots and names by June 30th. The more than a dozen Long Island districts affected have until the end of next school year to implement the changes or risk losing state aid. First in Newsday, the embattled inspector in the town of Oyster Bay is resigning today. Brian Noon is stepping down. He's being investigated by the Nassau DA's office. Three weeks ago, a Newsday report revealed the town ethics board had been investigating Noon's approval of a $2 million contract with a vendor that had ties to Noon's private company. An investigation and salvage mission now underway after the tragic end to the search for the missing Titanic-bound submersible. Tributes are pouring in from around the world for the five people killed when the vessel imploded deep in the North Atlantic near the iconic shipwreck, the five-day search for a Titan. That included help from the West Hampton-based 106th Rescue Wing ended yesterday when debris was found on the ocean floor. Essentially, we found... Uh, five different major pieces of, of debris that uh, told us that it was the uh, remains of the Titan. The initial thing we found was the nose cone, which was outside of the pressure hull. Um, we then found a large debris field. Within that large debris field, uh, we found the, f the front end bell of the pressure hull. Um, that was the first indication that um, there was a catastrophic event. Devastating. The Coast Guard says the investigation into what happened is underway and would continue in the area around the Titanic. LIRR riders are blasting proposed fare hikes. The MTA is wanting to increase ridership. Well, how is that supposed to happen if people can't even afford to pay the fare? Getting an opportunity to make money and play my part in the economy is now threatened by whether or not I have, to, I have the money to get there. I very well may have to pick up 15 cents off of the ground. At a public hearing yesterday, commuters said the MTA's planned 4% hike could keep them from riding trains and buses. There's another hearing today and Monday before the board votes on the proposal. If approved, the new fares would take effect by Labor Day. The majority of the state's motor vehicle inspection stations are now using these on-demand stickers or QR code prints that certify a past safety and emissions check. The new stickers also list the license plate and VIN numbers as well as mileage. The new system is meant to combat fraud, according to the DMV. A controversial change for fishermen. The state just enacted an emergency measure to reducing the size of keeper striped bass to a range of between 28 and 31 inches. Previously, the slot size was 28 to 35 inches. Many local fishermen say the change will hurt charter fishing businesses. A major new development in the deadly shooting on set of Alec Baldwin's Rust. Weapons supervisor Hannah Gutierrez Reed is charged with involuntary manslaughter and evidence tampering in the shooting of a cinematographer. New Mexico prosecutors say she passed narcotics to another person the day of the shooting to avoid prosecution. Charges were dropped against Massapequa native Alec Baldwin, who was pointing a gun at Helena Hutchins when it went off and killed her. An honor for Long Beach legend Billy Crystal. The actor, comedian, filmmaker will be saluted with a Kennedy Center honor. The ceremony will take place in December. Congratulations. Coming up, the Grand Slam Challenge honoring a beloved local baseball coach and... 
you put your mind to it, the sky's the limit. Like, if I'm here today, like, tomorrow you can be here and far surpass me. Only in Newsday, Suffolk County's trailblazing new detective sergeant, plus. Today I am on an eating assignment with our food writer, Scott Bogle. Keep eating, I, I got this. We are checking out the best seafood shacks on Long Island, and clearly we like this one. Right, we Scott? Just shake it out. We like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It looks very tasty, but first, your hyperlocal weather, mostly cloudy today. More rain and the weekend isn't looking much better. Here's a look at Rogers Beach in West Hampton. Highs around 71 degrees. Tonight, rain continues with thunderstorms and we cool down to the 60s. Tomorrow, the thunderstorms are continuing, but we warm up to around 75 degrees. And here's a look at your future cast. Most of the heavy storms will clear out Saturday morning. So not a complete weekend washout, but expect to see spotty showers Sunday. Still keep that umbrella handy if you can. A look at your seven day forecast coming up. Watch Newsday TV on the big screen. Use the remote to activate Siri, Alexa, Roku, or the Google Assistant on your streaming device. Say install Newsday. Newsday TV, covering Long Island like no one else can. A female officer is making history as she rises up the ranks in the Suffolk Police Department. Cecilia Dowd has the story you'll see only in Newsday. I'm just very proud and uh, humbled by the experience. Tamika Mays is making history in the Suffolk County Police Department. She's the first black woman to hold the title of Detective Sergeant. I think that I've earned everything that I've, I've gotten. I didn't get it because I was black. I, I got to this position because I work hard and I feel like hard work pays off. Perhaps it's in her blood. My father, he retired uh, a year ago, 37 years as a Suffolk County detective. He's the reason why I did this. He's very excited. He's very excited. And then when I told him, he was just like, oh, like you surpassed me by far, but it was never a competition. And the mom of three may have someone following in her footsteps. I have a seven year old and he's like, I'm going to be like you when I grow up. And I'm always like, you can, but you can be better as well. Mays began her law enforcement career with the NYPD before coming to Suffolk. I was part of the 9-11 class. I started in 2001. She now works in the special victims section. I just want to be the best detective sergeant I can be. I would just like to focus on my team and the work that they're doing right now. Detective Sergeant Mays also keeps busy as president of the Suffolk County Police LGBTQ Society, an organization she helped create. We help members in the department, civilian or sworn officers uh, with any issues they may have within the department. We try to help with recruitment onto the department and uh, we're just a face here if so that everybody knows that they are represented within the police department. A word of advice, Mays says don't let anything, including your own fear, deter you from what you'd like to do. You put your mind to it, the sky's the limit. Like if I'm here today, like tomorrow you can be here. and far surpassed me. Cecilia Dowd for Newsday TV. Breaking new ground. Read more about Detective Sergeant Mays on Newsday.com. Click get more below the Newsday TV video box. The annual All-Star Game featuring the top baseball seniors in both counties has a new name. It's an honor for a beloved coach who died from cancer. Carissa Kelman has a story you'll see only in Newsday. This is the 16th Grand Slam Challenge All-Star Baseball game, but this year is different because these players are swinging for someone special. Not only is it cool coaching these kids, but it's really, really cool coaching an event named after my best friend, Brian. Brian Bonin, the former Comac baseball coach, died of melanoma last January at just 33 years old. This year, the annual showcase game between the best Nassau and Suffolk seniors was renamed in his honor. It's only been a year, but even after this time, people are still thinking about him. He's still well, relevant, he's meaningful to people. Two Suffolk All-Stars recall being a part of Bonin's final season in 2017, where he battled his illness to lead Comac to a Long Island championship. Brian's like, no, I'm gonna push through because these guys have been pushing for me the whole season. I've been pushing for them and we're gonna go out together and win this thing. I started my career with him and I get to end him representing him. It just it feels awesome. He was completely selfless. He cared about everybody else and made sure everyone else was well taken care of before himself. So he's just really the best kind of person you can know. It was just awesome playing for such a great guy. At Farmingdale State College, Carissa Kelman, Newsday TV. 
What an amazing honor. For more on the Brian Bone and Grand Slam Challenge, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard and Son. Seafood shacks are a big part of summer for many on the island. So where should you go? Elisa DiStefano and Scott Vogel have today's Feed Me TV. You can find some of the best seafood on Long Island at our local seafood shacks, including John Scott's in West Hampton Beach. Good, because I am hungry. Come on. This looks delicious. Our food writer, Scott Vogel, brought me to this beautiful place. Now, when I first moved to Long Island, everyone told me if you want the authentic, you know, real beachy summertime experience, you have to go to a shack on the water. I was like, hmm, you know? But it's true, though. You know, if you want the authentic beachy summertime, you know, sand in your shoes, Elisa, kick off your pumps, you know, type <laughs> experience, you come to a place like this. All right, so what did you order for us? <laughs> Anybody have any napkins? What's the deal with the wings? I don't know, except they're, they look like buffalo wings. But uh, here's what I know about the wings, is that everybody orders them here. They're like a right. house specialty. Right? That was an impressive bite, wasn't it? Not dainty like, like I expected good. from you. I go for a Scott. <laughs> I feel like you have to have a good lobster roll to be considered a good seafood spot, right? Mm -hmm. I want the whole lobster roll experience because I feel like the bread's a big part of it, mm -hmm. right? To me, the more meat, the better. That's mm -hmm. all I ask for in this world. <laughs> Do you know how many of these I've had since I moved here? Oh it's goodness. ridiculous. Scott's like, I'll take the seafood shack assignment, please. <laughs> so Long Island has no shortage of shacks. Right. right, but so that's a good thing. Body's Beach Shack in Blue Point. You go there for the party colored Adirondack chairs, these adult swings at the bar. Like so no a children different allowed. vibe there, a totally mm -hmm. different vibe. And then other than that, you'll go beach in. I mean, how many places can you get an egg sandwich on the beach anymore? They've got these wonderful photos on the wall. This is fabulous stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this is just, you know, this is Long Island. I took a little breather. I think I could go in for some more. All right. Went, what about those next? black and trim tacos? I picked very messy things. <laughs> I am not the most elegant eater here. Okay. I think these are good, right? I mean, it's beach food, right? I mean, you know, you're sitting here you're watching the sunset. I mean, it's gorgeous. There's one thing left on the table. Are you a stuffed quahog girl? I think this I'm might be my hear, favorite thing. I'm glad to hear you say that because I was, I was, it was on the bubble. You know, if I go in for a second bite, then it's <laughs> legit good. Yeah. Right, right. And we're on the beach, you know? You don't have to be, you know, getting ice cream and, you know, it doesn't, or burgers or whatever. You can get like real food. Mm -hmm. True taste of summer right here. Mm -hmm. Yummy. For more on seafood shacks, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Get more of the stories you've seen on Newsday TV at Newsday.com. Plus breaking news, investigations, things to do, restaurants, and other Long Island news you can't get anywhere else. At Newsday.com, covering Long Island like no one else can. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.